Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, I'm showing you all my tips and tricks to get the perfect pumpkin pie. So let's get started. First, the crust. I made a batch of my favorite pie dough. It's on the blog, and there's a link in the description box below. I'm gonna roll this out to be about a quarter of an inch thick, and it's gonna make a delicious buttery crisp crust. If you're using a pre-made crust, you're gonna wanna do things differently. The filling just goes right inside. You can skip ahead to the mark below. But I will say a butter crust is my absolute favorite and such an important part of the pie. Pre-made pie crusts are really convenient and they're foolproof too, but I will say they're usually made with shortening and not butter. If you blind bake a butter crust, it turns out amazing and perfect and golden and delicious. If you do that to a pre-made pie crust, it's burnt and bitter and ruined. So butter crusts take a few extra steps, but there is definitely a payoff. If you haven't already, preheat your oven to 425. If you're using a pre-made crust, make that 400. My crust is rolled out. I'm gonna transfer this into my pie dish. That's why I love using a pastry mat, by the way. Roll that on. And I'm going to zhuzh it in. <laughs> I'm gonna trim some of the excess pie dough. Trim your pie dough so you have about an inch of excess. Now we're gonna fold our pie dough underneath to have a nice thick edge that's clean and beautiful. If you wanna learn more about pie crust and find all the tips and tricks to make it perfect, click up here for my video. It is a full how-to. But right now, we're gonna be crimping our crust, so crimp as you wish. I love to just give it a simple pinch with my fingers, but you can even just mash it down with a fork. This can go into the freezer for at least 20 minutes. I like to make some pie crust and just keep them in there for a few days because during the holidays, I am making pie after pie. If it goes into a deep freeze, it'll bake up perfectly. The less time it's in there, you're running a risk. Towards the end of your chill time, grab a sheet of parchment paper. I'm gonna fold this up just like I was back in elementary school making a snowflake. Cut the edge off so it's a circle, and then we're gonna cut in so we have nice little frills. Just like that. Now, grab your completely frozen pie shell, place your parchment paper in here. This is a nice barrier to protect it. You can either pour dried beans or pie weights in here. I have this like tripled up sheet of tin foil, aluminum foil, that I recycle over and over again. It's in the shape of a pie shell and I just press it up against the frozen pie so there is no sagging during the bake. It holds everything up and keeps your pie perfectly shaped. This is ready to go into the oven, 425 for about 15 minutes, then we'll take stuff out and pop it back in. While my crust is blind baking, or not, if you're using a pre-made frozen crust, I'm gonna make the filling all in one bowl. I want 160 grams or three quarters of a cup of packed brown sugar right into my bowl. I do not like packing brown sugar, so I love using a scale instead. When you pack it, I swear it tends to have lumps, and I do not like lumps in anything, especially custards like a pumpkin pie. My scale's done. Now I want half a teaspoon of salt, a little bit of contrast is nice. The spices is kind of up to you. I'm gonna give you my basic, this will work and everybody loves it set of spices, but you could add your own favorites in too, which I'll talk about later. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of ground ginger, an eighth of a teaspoon of cloves, that's like a pinch basically, so a little pinch, and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. I like to freshly grate mine though. It's a little bit more aromatic that way. And I love it. <laughs> Grab a whisk and mix it up. This is your chance to do any troubleshooting if you see lumps. Now it's time for the pumpkin. Pumpkin pie is an amazing custard pie. So it's a custard made with milk and eggs and sugar, but the pumpkin is there to add substance, beautiful flavor and color. We also have all of our favorite spices in there as well that just say, hi, fall is here. Let's have a good time. You can use canned pumpkin mix or you can roast your own pumpkins and make your own puree. I will say that Libby's does a great job. I'm not being paid to say that. I've tried a lot of different brands and private label pumpkin purees. And this stuff has a wonderful color, just the right amount of water. Some of them could be too watery. And um, it's really great for all sorts of pumpkin desserts. A lot of times if you roast your own pumpkin puree, you'll find out the color is like much paler and you can have some consistency issues. 
If you want to try adding some more spices, give allspice or cardamom a try. You could add both of those. A quarter of a teaspoon each, it'll be delicious. It's time for three room temperature eggs. This is a custard after all, and the eggs are gonna bind everything together and give us that wonderful silky consistency. Pumpkin and tomatoes both come from the new world. However, I will say tomatoes is the global favorite. Oh my gosh, totally changed so many different cultures way of eating. Pumpkin, really popular in the US, not so much globally. I get a lot of messages saying it's really hard to find pumpkin where you are. And all I can say is it is worth the search. It is a delicious gourd that you should really try. I'm also adding in one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. This will bake up wonderfully. If you want an extra decadent pumpkin pie, you can swap out the same amount of evaporated milk for cream and it'll be delicious. Both work really well though. Now we're gonna give this a whisk until it is silky smooth. But I have to tell you, there's a bit of a debate between my friends and I. I always warm the filling up on the stove. And let me tell you what the deal is. You never wanna put ice cold anything in the oven unless it's a pastry crust. So if I was making a cake, room temperature eggs, room temperature milk, everything is room temperature or even slightly warm, and that way it bakes up evenly. The same thing for a pie, especially a custard pie. If you add ice cold things into the oven, by the time the center is set, the outside is gonna be a little bit overdone. It might even be cracked. A couple of friends of mine are saying, no, 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 that's not true. I never warm my pie filling up. It turns out just fine. So in the interest of science and baking, I'm making two pies today, one with you, one off camera. I'm gonna warm this filling up. The other one will go in room temperature and we'll see if there is any difference or if it's just like technically the best thing to do, but you don't really have to in a rush. If you watch this channel regularly, you might say, hey, don't you already have a pumpkin pie video? And I do, but I know everyone's busy, so I wanted to put up a version with lots of time-saving tips so you could get this pie done and into the oven in no time. And that includes if you want to use a pre-made frozen crust. If you're warming this up, just pour it into a pan or pot. I'm gonna place this over medium low to low heat and just warm it up. So stir occasionally, it just needs to be warm to the touch and a little bit of steam's coming off of it. It's not boiling. The added bonus is when I stir, I'm removing a lot of the air bubbles that got worked in here when I whisked the ingredients together. And air bubbles are not your friend for custard. So it's pretty cold right now. I probably want about 100 degrees. So this is nice and warm. You don't wanna burn anything so you didn't heat it up too much. This arrangement can come right out and you can see my pie crust is like dried out on the bottom the edge is starting to take on some color and i have another optional step and you can let me know in the comments if you're anti or pro but i love having an egg wash on pastry it makes it golden shiny and just more like that much more appetizing an egg wash is just egg with a tablespoon of milk or cream you could even use water the annoying thing is you always have extra egg wash left over like no matter what i just pour that into the Pour that into the fridge. I just keep it in the fridge and add it to my omelet the next day or scrambled eggs. But if you don't want to do that, you could brush with a little bit of cream and it'll give you a similar situation. Okay. Now I'm going to pour my warm filling into my pie shell. If you're using a pre-made frozen pie crust, they're very shallow, so you'll have enough filling for two pies. They make perfect gifts, so someone in your life is going to be very happy. This is ready to go into the oven, 400 for 15 minutes, and then we're gonna reduce to 350. We're gonna bake this until the center just jiggles softly. That's gonna be about 40 minutes. In you go. And I wasn't kidding, I did make two pies. This one did not get warmed up. We'll see if we can tell the difference. One more tip, if bubbles really bother you on the surface, a hair dryer fixes everything. In you go. If you see your pie crust is taking on too much color, just tent it, wrap it in foil, about half an hour into the bake, you'll be nice and set. My pies are out of the oven. I don't know if you can tell which is which. Neither of them cracked. This is the one that had the filling cooked a little bit. This is the one with cold filling. The difference really so far was that this took 10 minutes longer to bake because it was cold. So you reduced your cook time a little bit. The texture also is a little bit more like bumpy on top. I think this had more water in it. When we warmed the filling up, we cooked off a little bit of the water and that gave it kind of a, like a nicer consistency. 
the truth is gonna be when we take a taste. So let's cut in and see. Time for a taste test to see which is best. It's basically a tie. They are both so good, especially with a nice dollop of whipped cream. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe, and if you like this video, check out my pumpkin playlist. Hmm.